So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, is anyone confirming my audio? Well, we can hear you. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay, so let's start. So we have, uh, we are doing the revision session for mock. So we'll discuss all the questions. Uh, they probably are not in the sequence as they are in the portal, but hopefully I didn't miss out on any. And so, and I believe you must have uh, solved the mock by now. So that will be easy for me and you as well to understand. Okay, so the sites are visible, right? The PDF, right? Yes, sir, it is. Okay, so so this is your first question, and uh, it says that which of the following regular uh, regressions model will certainly achieve your training error on a given training data set, right? Where the error is defined as a sum of squared error. So you have been given some models in the options, and you have to find which model will definitely will give you the zero training error, right? So how you define your uh, squared error? This is just uh, this is just uh, the predicted value minus true value is pair of that and some of all the training examples. So this is how you define uh, squared error. So out of these given models, which one will give me which will uh, give me the zero training error, right? So that is that we need to find out. So if you, if you look at this thing, this squared error will be zero. So if, if we set it to zero, this uh, will be zero only when all the square terms will zero, right? So this will this, this must be zero for all i's. I mean because these are the sum of a squared sum. So every term must be zero, right? And this says that the HXI is equal to by i. So from there, you can choose that the last option is only model, which will always achieve the zero run on the squared error, right? And even if you can check by the option that all of these uh, uh, options need not to be give zero error always. Right? So it's the way to solve this. So any so doubt in this question? Sir, yeah, sir, sir, what is the uh, option A? Option is the mean, mean, mean of all okay, the okay, 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 average okay. for them. Okay, okay, okay. Right. So you are you are predicting a constant to every uh, every example, uh, every trending example. Whatever the mean of the levels is, you are predicting that mean to every example. So that mean not to give the zero error, right? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah basically, the 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 predicted one and the actual ones are same. That yeah. give the, us the zero error. And the okay. second one is the linear in the features, and this will give on zero only when the all goes like in a hyperplane, and that need not to be true always. So that that model need not to give zero error always. So okay. Again, second option you can uh, reject, and again the third option you are uh, modeling a constant, right? Mm -hmm. So that again need not to give the zero. Yeah. So any doubt in this question? No, sir. No. Let's clear. Okay, so let's move to the next question. Okay, you must have done this earlier as well. So here you have been applied the kernel decreasing on a given data set, right? So kernel means that you will transform your data set into a, a higher dimension space, and in higher dimension space, your your data matrix is five of x, right? And the weight vector is given by this thing. So remember, the weight vectors can be written as a linear combination of the data points, and the data points are your uh, are present in this matrix phi of x, right? So, so that coefficient that we are talking about, that linear combination of data points. So this this is your alpha vector, right? So from this equation, you can say that your alpha vector is given to be this uh, this vector, right? Now, what is asking is that. What is the prediction for the data point and this data point you have to predict so what is the prediction in the kernel regression you just take for any data point x test and in the in this case x like test is your uh, zero vector so this is your predictions alpha one k and you take the kernel function value for the test the test data point and every data point you find those kernel value and just multiply that coefficient those alpha alpha coefficient element of the alpha vector right so this is alpha one k x test x one similarly alpha two k x test x two and you will uh, now you need to find this kernel kernel function value right because you have alpha one alpha two alpha one this is your alpha one up to alpha four right so what is kernel function kernel is given to be polynomial kernel of degree three right and how we define a polynomial kernel it's just x i transpose x a 
plus one raised to power three, right? When it's operating upon two two values, two data point x i and x i. So if if I find the value of x test x x one, so you are not given x one here. But if if you notice here, this zero vector will make sure that the dot product is always zero for any data point, right? Because you are uh, you are doing the dot product with the test data points, and test data point is zero. For, uh, and choose any data points from the training example. That that quantity must be zero. So your kernel function varies for all these things, right? So this must be one. And this is one for all the data points. And therefore, your predictions now become alpha one plus alpha two up to alpha four. So your prediction is one point three, and this is your alpha values, right? So one point three plus zero point six minus zero point two minus zero point seven, and that that is one, right? So your answer should be one. So remember the formula. This formula you have to apply, and the kernel you have been given there, right? So, and the same kind of question you have in the practice assignment as well. So I think you it should be no problem in this question. If you have any doubts in this, please ask. Otherwise, we can do the next part. So, so alpha. Uh, so where is the alpha here? This is alpha, right? This is alpha, right? Remember, we we call the weight vector as a linear combination of data point, and that coefficient is coefficient vector is alpha. Right? So so remember, we call that W to be the linear combination of data points in the when we don't transform our data point. So hmm. this is your alpha. Similarly, our data data set is now pi of x hmm. in the transform space. So your the weight vector will be the linear combination of data points. So th this form. Is given here, right? The weight is written like this. So if you compare this, alpha vector is this, is this, this vector. Okay, this is one point three zero point. Okay. So what will be the value of alpha one into x test one test uh, x one? So alpha one, alpha one. This is your alpha one. This is your alpha two. This is your alpha three, alpha four, right? Now you have to find a k x test and x one, right? So what is your x test? X test is zero vector. Is zero vector. So and kernel function is what? This is just x x uh, x test transpose x one plus one raised to power three, right? So if you look at this, this this will be zero because your test test data point is zero. So your kernel function is one for all all the data points. If you put two, three, four, whatever you put, you are multiplying it. You are taking dot product with a zero vector. So this must be zero, and your kernel function value will be one for all these. Sir, just just in case we have a value for x x uh, test value. Suppose we have some parameters and values here. Then then yeah. for finding for finding this kernel function, uh, you must have those data points as well. Otherwise, you cannot find this kernel function, right? Okay, we need right. some data points. Okay, so, sir. Either we will have a zero uh, x test as a zero vector, or we will have both x test and the x data matrix. Sorry. We will either have x test as the zero vector, mm -hmm. or we will have x test as some normal vector, and we will have the data matrix as well. Yeah, data matrix. Got it, sir. And that will be part of the question itself, right, sir? In the examination, in case if it is not the zero vector, so we we will then, be given you you need x test of those those data points to find the standard answer. Okay, sir. Thank you. So I think, sir, if the uh, data points are zero, we want to predict for zero. Then doesn't matter the degree is uh, four, five, or ten. It should always be one, now. Then it's the sum of those alpha vectors. Right? In this case, it's coming out to be one. Then it is one. Huh. No, no. I'm just I'm just saying that uh, if the x test, okay, mm -hmm. if the x test is always zero, then the uh, degree of polynomial doesn't matter. I think. Because it will uh, multiply by zero, and the alpha is one. Yeah, and... here is here is always one kernel function value is always there. Okay, okay, okay. If the, okay, okay, okay. Got it, sir. Yeah, we can move to the next question. So in the next question, you have been given three uh, solutions solutions of the same uh, linear regression problem. So W star is the Analytical solution, the normal equation solution. W is the gradient descent solution, and the W L C is the stochastic gradient descent solution. Right. So we have applied three techniques on the same data set, and we have got three weight vectors: W star, W Z, and W L C. Right. Now this this condition has been satisfied by these three vectors. So what this condition says, 
So this is the distance of W star and WG, and this is the distance between W star and WLG. So it says that WZ is most closer to W star than WLC. So W right, and if you look at uh, look at this particular situation, let's say this is your weight factor and this is your this is your loss function. In this case, your W star will be what this W star because W star always achieves the minimum method on the loss function, and this is the loss function which is achieved by the W star. So this is your W star now. What, what will be the location of WZ and WSZ? Let's say WZ is somewhere here. Let's say your WZ is somewhere here. Right? And so this will be loss that will be achieved by WZ. And what will be the uh, position of WSZ in this case? Remember this conditions now. So this condition says that WSZ is far away from WZ to W star, right? So, so WSZ should be far, far than uh, WZ from the W star. So uh, uh, Rather, it should be somewhere here, or uh, and even if you look at here, it must be uh, distance from W star should be higher than this distance. This distance, right? So, doesn't uh, matter where it's lying. The loss function for W S G will be always more than W Z because the loss function for W G will be somewhere here, and for W S G will be somewhere here. So, W S G will always achieve more error than the W G, right? So, can you sir come again in, uh, to the equation? That is given in the question itself. Yeah. It is so this is this is the distance of uh, W Z from the W star, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is the distance of W star from W S C. Okay, okay, got it. Now I got it. Okay, okay, yeah. So, okay. so the question saying that the W Z achieves the error zero point five. So, which of the following approach with, uh, uh, is more likely to give less training error, right? So, out of these two, which will give me the less less error? The one which is closer to W star, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gradient yeah. descent will give me the less error. Okay. And so if it is opposite, then it is the uh, stochastic gradient W. Yeah, if the uh, stochastic gradient descent weight factors is closer to W star, then that will achieve uh, less error. Right? Less error. Okay, okay, okay. So, so I have a quick question. Uh, we can, we, we say gradient descent will have less errors in this case because we already have given the condition that the distance uh, for the weight vector is lesser for gradient descent as compared to the stochastic. Yes. But in case if we have not been given this. Yeah. Then it so depends what, what vector you is, uh, you got using this solution. So it may be the case that uh, you have used different iterations in gradient descent and you have uh, 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 and used different number of iterations in the stochastic gradient descent. Then those weight, weight vector can be. Uh, can differ. We cannot, we cannot comment that. WG will always be closer to W star than WS. So it depends upon the what parameters you have chosen, right? Blending yes. gradient. I think that will that will depend. But here it is given that that WG is closer to W star, right? Yeah. So it is only true for this condition. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 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 So let's move to the next question. So okay. So here you have been given one dimensional data data set. We are, you have been given three data points x1, x2, and x3, and only one features. Okay? So the level are one, minus one, and one. Now you have to fit the model. So, first question is you have to mill the, uh, you have to fit the constant model. Okay, so how you will do this question? So, we x, x, x transport, x, x transpose x. I mean, that is the standard way of doing it. Okay, so and what will be x in this this case? Uh, it's it's a row vector. Row vector. What is that vector? Uh, it's minus one zero two. Right? But we are fitting constant here, right? We are fitting like uh, let's let's call it w zero. So we are fitting the model of form x y equal to w zero. We are fitting a constant. Equals yeah. to m x plus c. Oh, and, okay. and what is the difference in these two models? W, let's say W1, X1, and W0. W, so, this is your one model, this is another model, right? Here we are fitting constant, here we are uh, dependent on the feature sets there. Right? So, what will be X in this case, and what will be X in this case? And what will be X in this case? Let's say W0 plus W1, X1. In the above one, the insert is X is 0, I think. X is? Zero. You mean zero vector. 
okay and in this case minus 102 in this case this okay and what 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 in this case what about constant plus 0 it is so same same vector minus 102 so so when do we add dummy feature in the data set when we have that intercept intercept so in this model we have intercept right yes so in okay. this x we yes. will have okay now now come to this part what will be the x in this case that's zero. zero vector so some it's a dummy feature only right you can think as a dummy feature x zero which is taking value one always right so in this case x will be one 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 right just just think it as a dummy feature which is taking value as one i'm still not able to get it so can you please uh, just draw a diagram for this thing i mean this equation you can relate right. that that's right okay so, so let me uh, so i have a quick question mm -hmm. my understanding with this was if y1 is equal to b0 so in this in this given data points if i'm trying to fit so i will take y1 as simply the values of y because we are just having the constant so the weights will be just 1 minus 1 1 and then we'll take an average of those three is yeah that, that is correct yeah that is correct so that is another way of solving this since we are fitting a, uh, fitting a constant here right so what is the square loss the square loss is this the predicted values minus the actual values right so predict prediction is always a constant and if you if you solve this this loss function to minimize this loss function you have to take the derivative with respect to the uh, beta zero and that's all that, that means that derivative will be twice of beta zero minus by i's right for all i's and if you solve for beta zero it's it will be the sum of sum of all by i's and divided by n right so this is this is what you are doing so whenever you are fitting a constant remember that the, um, the that constant is average and it's an intuitive as well right someone says yeah. that give me a constant that best describes your labels what will be that uh, that constant it's just a mean of those labels right so actually you need not to do any calculation in this question you just take the average of labels and just report that that mean right but yes. but if, if someone solves in this manner right where where you you choose xx transpose inverse xy then you have to take care that what x you are choosing this approach is clear right why we are choosing mean in, if we are fitting constant i am not clear would you kindly clarify on, on this like why you are assuming y is equal to uh, y1 is equal to b uh, beta 0 that yeah. means i'm uh, accepting that it's a constant yeah it's a constant right it's beta 0 is a constant it's the, or you can think as a w0 or what notices we have followed in the lectures w0 just okay. the notices right so so here it's what we are saying the predictions for any data point whether it's a training data points or whether it's a test data point we are predicting a constant okay Right, so what what will be the best constant you will predict for any data point? You just look at those labels and average it. That will be a best constant that you will be predict for any data point, right? Uh, and this this also is verified by this equation. So our loss function is this one, right? Loss is the predictions minus the true value. So prediction is beta for any data point, and the true value is by i. And uh, our task is to minimize this loss function. From there, you can see that the, this best beta, that best constant is the average of all the labels. Can we take a loss? Sir, but, no, no, sir, but, for, but for this function, right, sir, you have written here. So L beta mm -hmm. 0, it doesn't mean to take uh, average of all these sum, summation, right? If I just consider beta naught minus y i, okay, so beta naught is constant. It will give you some number to me, but it doesn't give me any average. So why are you taking the average over here, sir? No. So this is this is my loss function, right? This is my loss function. Yes, loss function. Yeah. And which and now our next task is to minimize this loss function. For which beta this loss is minimum. So basically, what you are referring to is the previous problem where uh, the minimum loss is zero, and we say y one is equal to beta naught, is it? Y i is equal to beta naught. Yes, yes, I. Yeah, by i is the beta naught. That beta naught we are finding. Right. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Now come to this this particular approach where if you try to solve this XX transpose, then you have to take care what X you are choosing. Okay. One question. One question here. Okay. That uh, that beta naught is going to be the average of each of them because. Yeah. Uh, I think, sir. I think I got this way. Uh, what I mean to say, just keep the beta naught. Okay. Like that only. And mm -hmm. instead of Y I, just keep putting the Y I value. Okay. So we have three points over here, right? We do mm -hmm. the summation. Beta naught yeah. minus first Y point. Okay. Okay. Plus again, beta naught minus second y point. Okay. Plus beta naught third y point, right? Okay. Equal to zero because we are seeing that uh, this thing. So it will have three beta naught, right? I so mean, you have beta naught, uh, beta naught minus one square, right? Plus beta naught plus one square. Now plus okay. Beta naught minus one whole square equal to and this is your loss function. Huh. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Now you have to you have to find for which beta this this loss is minimum. Okay. Right. So what you will do, you just take the average. Okay. Not average. Just just do the differentiation and equate to zero. You will find the best beta for which this function is minimum, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So this will be your average. You take the average. This will be your two beta naught, and again from here two beta naught, two beta naught, and so, so that will be your average, right? So two beta naught naught minus one plus two beta naught uh, plus one, right? Plus or you just do the calculation square at all, whatever. This is a quadratic in beta naught. You can easily find the uh, minimal count, right? Okay. So, oh, sir. So, sir, you. Sir? Take, uh, yeah, sir. go ahead. Please, 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 please. Yeah. So, sir, you have taken here actually uh, instead of average. I mean, what I'm saying, you are, you have taken the uh, derivative of uh, against the beta naught, right? Then you set it yeah. to yeah. zero. Zero, zero. Even that also will give the minimum value, right? Where exactly the value will be minimum, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So where yeah. we find the gradient, right? Uh, yeah. The, the, the yeah, global yeah. minima. That's what we say. Mm. So yeah. using that thing for this function, you take uh, you taken the uh, derivative against the beta naught and set it yes. to zero. With that yes. thing, you found the value of beta naught where the value will be minimum. Minimum, right? right. Yeah. That that justifies the thing, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, so that's what. Like you have written these three equations, sir. So you are writing the value of x vector, right? So in the yeah. first case, you wrote that it is 1, 1, 1. Then what will be in second case and third case? Like in the first case, you wrote that it will be 1, 1, 1, that constant vector. Yeah, yeah, we are coming to that. We are coming to that. Okay. So, so, uh, so, so, so when you do, do this summation, beta naught mm -hmm. minus uh, yi whole square, if we take the differentiation and put it to zero, this summation, mm -hmm. then it will yes. become something like 2. And summation beta naught minus beta uh, y i y i. And so if we took uh, if we equate it to zero, then mm -hmm. the beta naught is equals to y one. No no no. So this is summation right? This is summation. If the differentiation will be two beta naught minus y i. Mm -hmm. This is your differentiation. If you set to zero, it means what? This is your two and beta naught right? Minus summation over y i is. Okay okay. Okay. So this is beta naught will become. So two two will be here also, so that goes to zero. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So this will become summation over y i by n, right? This is your mean. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay. Now, thank you. Okay. okay. If you follow this path, which is actually I won't prefer because in the constant, whenever you give you are. Uh, you are modeling a constant in the regression model, then it's just a mean of labels, right? It just makes sense as well. So in this case, what what x you will choose? Let let's say I'm fitting model by equal to w zero. I'm fitting model by equal to w w one x x one. I'm in the first picture and w w zero plus w one x one. Or, or say let's say or and again I'm fitting model w w zero plus w one x one and plus w two x x one square. Okay. So let's talk about all these both models. Now, in this case, what x you will choose? In this case, let's let's think about this first. So in this case, x is pretty easy, right? It's whatever is given, minus one, minus one zero two, right? Now, what about in this case? You you just think it's like x zero, where x zero is always one, right? So we have added dummy feature. In this case, x will become your Minus one zero two, and, and this dummy features you will add. So this will be your data matrix in this case, right? Because you have added a dummy features, you have and you are learning intercept as well. 
right? What about this case now? You can think is this as a w x w zero x zero, where x zero is a dummy feature with all ones, right? So what is uh, your x in this case? This is all dummy features only, because you are not adding your feature the x one here in this this model in this model, right? So x is will be one one one. So in this particular model, whatever x you are choosing is a constant only, and then that uh, vector of ones only, right? And what about this this model? What what will be x in this case? Okay, so this corresponding to w zero, this corresponding to w one. That that you need to take care of, right? I, I'm not really clear about why we are choosing one 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 minus one zero two. It is coming from the data that is given. This is the corresponding one, to x one, one, right? Sir, I also have the same question as Ravi. We are taking one 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 because we are taking dummy features, I guess. Dummy feature, right? Yeah. So, or or if I draw draw it in the vector form, so this will become something like that. So the weight vector, so y equal to w zero plus w one x. So x one is is like your uh, or say w zero x zero plus w one x one, where uh, x zero is always one, right? And if I can write it as w transpose x vector, right? Uh, w transpose x. So, so in this w is your w zero, w one, and x will become your this like this x zero and x x one. So this x zero should be this. So this x zero will be one one. X zero act like a unit vector. X zero is the dummy feature that we call it. Right, and x one is given to you like minus one zero two. And similarly, if, if you are modeling only w zero in this case, you are only modeling w zero x zero. You are not adding your first feature at all. So in this case, x. So you can write it w uh, w transpose x, where w vector will be your this w zero only, and x will become the dummy features of the one one. Excuse me, sir. Sorry. Uh, sir, actually. Uh, when live sessions happen, in case of a uh, single variable, no, that is one-dimensional data, we can use the formula for W as uh, summation of x i y i by summation of x i square. Also, right? We will straight away get the value for W. Do we really need to compute this much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Actually, it's uh, easy if we calculate using this formula: summation of x i y i. By summation of x a square. So don't talk about that one. But this this all road uh, we have already done in that. So that's what I'm doing here, right? Okay, sir. No, no. So uh, a, I'm just talking about time consumption. So um, yeah. in case of single variable, so we can use that this formula. Question, if I talk about this question, it's just average, right? This is in this particular. If you are fitting a mod constant model, that is always gonna be a average of levels. Actually, you need not to spend much time on this question at all. Okay. But but if someone go, goes into this this approach, that I'm missing, you have to take care of this X. Yes, sir. No, what I'm asking is, we can use that formula as well, right? Summation of X I Y I by yeah, summation of X I square. Yeah, okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. So what about this part? This okay. So we have already discussed this. This is kind of form by by equal to W zero X zero. So in this case, you will choose X S. That is minus one to zero or two, right? And by it's already given to you, and you can apply x transpose x y, right? What about this model? Is if if I talk about this model, by by equal to w zero plus w one x one, and I'm taking also square of the feature. Now, what what do you think x will be? Now you have three weight vectors you are learning: w zero, w one, one one minus one zero two and one zero four, right? So this will be one one one, and the corresponding to x one, this will be minus one zero two, and corresponding to x square, this is gonna be your x square now, so one zero four. So it's something like what we were taught in machine learning foundations. Practically the same thing. Yes. Okay. Right. So this is like double transpose or x, and this x becomes now. Hello. Yes. So I'm saying the sorry the answer to the previous one is 0.33, right? It's average of y. That 0.33. Ah, okay. Yes. But but that doesn't really. Uh, 
but if we had to let's say just for the sake of argument if we had to find an equation which is y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1x let's say with mm -hmm. the intercept then you have to do the long process you have to take the inverse and compute yeah you can go that way okay But is there an algebraic way of doing it is what I'm wondering. I mean, here we have, like, it's very clear. Uh, sorry, if you go back to the equation, like beta 0 minus y, right? Mm -hmm. So this is minimum when uh, beta is actually the mean of y, right? I mean, you can differentiate and you'll get that also, right? Yeah. Uh, that's clear. By logic, we can answer this. But is there an algebraic way of doing it? For, for double 0 plus double 1, next one, you are No, no, not that, not that one. Uh, that one I know the method. I mean, it was taught in MLF also. Mm -hmm. uh, like just here, like beta zero minus y one. Uh, just this method is there an algebraic way of solving it? What do you mean by algebraic way? This is this is the what we have done, right? We uh, set to uh, there we take the derivative and set to yeah, zero. Yeah, okay, that's the that's the only. Tick, got it, got it. Right. Can we use approach one for the second part of the problem also? No. Mm, uh, approach means if you find loss function, take the derivative with respect to w zero w one. That, that that's what how we uh, arrive this formula, right? That's how we arrived on this formula. You can go that manner for as that way as well, but that will take time because you have to take derivative with respect to w zero with respect to w one, and then you have to find the formula that once someone has mentioned summation over x i by i is upon summation x i square. So that all formulas come from that taking derivative and set to zero by using them, right? So that's how we can get this formula, right? Remember, we find loss function as yeah, yeah. Uh, summation over uh, the prediction value, right? So W X W transpose X I minus I yeah. L and yeah. square. Yeah. Yeah. Take the derivative with respect to every W and then we get this. Thing. Okay. So same thing we are doing, but in, the, in terms of concept, it makes more sense to just apply, just remember that the mean would be the best fit for the uh, sir, uh, sir, I think uh, someone what he said about you know summation of x y by summation of x square mm -hmm. that is only suitable for you know when that uh, w zero is not there. So it is y equal to w one x one. Yeah, for that model y equal to. Uh, for that model, that is uh, absolutely you know. Yeah, yeah. Very quick, very quick method to mm -hmm. find out. So it's again the same algebraic way. You find the loss and, the, and, and the, that's what she was trying to say. You know, yeah, you can take use the that derivative here yes. Same thing. Same, same part, same cheat, uh, but using different parts, right? How you go to yes. from one point to another. Yeah. Let us move to next question. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, you have been you have to find W is upon W M M, right? And you've been given X as well and Y as well. And lambda penalty is given to you 50. Okay. So what is W is? Lambda into uh, weight is square. Is it loss function is square plus uh, lambda into W uh, the whole square, right? That, that is loss. Right? What is loss? That is loss, right? W is what we write. This is how we W write. is that uh, regression value yeah. will be there and then lambda into weight is square will be there. Yes, we add that uh, regular regular parameter, right? Yes. yes. Whatever you are saying is a loss function. Here I am asking what is the weight that you get. Okay, In MLE, yeah. what you get? Uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, Emily, yes. uh, it's like, uh, yeah, that same thing only, right? Like, uh, excess transpose, uh, or, I mean, inverse than xy. Mm, correct. Yeah, and what is uh, W is same, same, same formula. So, I think it will be one. No, oh, uh, xx transpose plus lambda I, the whole inverse. Yeah, this this one xx transpose lambda I in inverse xy. This is W is okay, and this is W M L E. Right? And if you notice the data set, if you find x, in, this, this will be transpose. So, sir, what I have told that is the loss function for W ridge, right? Yeah, that you mentioned uh, plus lambda norm of W square. That is the loss function. Everything messed up, sir, now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, so if you notice x into y will be constant, right? X, x, y, x into y will be constant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So can can I can I cancel those? 
yeah. this is constant again this will be constant if you look at xx transpose yeah it will be same yeah this is constant again and if you find xx transpose going to be 50 so in this case even you don't need to do calculation of x y and everything it's just xx transpose going to be 50 and lambda is given to be 50 right and inverse will be uh, one inverse will be one by eight hundred, right? Fifty plus fifty. Similarly, so x transpose is fifty, so it's just one by two. So we so so, so we uh, do not need to find the inverse also, I think. No, this is just a scalar, so inverse will be one by two of that, right? Because x transpose this is this is fifty plus fifty, right? So inverse of that will be what? It's just one by okay, one by hundred, right? And this is fifty, I think. Uh, so that xy xy got cancelled out that part is clear mm -hmm. yeah yeah that, that part is clear that xy xy got cancelled out because it's uh, uh then after how we are simplifying it like xx transpose plus lambda i we are putting it simply 50 and then the bottom part we are putting what is xx transpose what is xx transpose in this case we will simply multiply 9 plus 25 30 for 50 yeah it is 50 50, 50 yeah. right so what is lambda 50 i lambda will be the one I is just a constant here in this, right? So I is the identity matrix of shape B plus B. Uh, so this is a constant. So this is 100, right? X is transfer plus lambda. It's 100. So inverse of that will be 1 by 100. Uh, OK. OK. Sometimes more, in, more information lead us to confusion. That's why if in this question, Y value will not be there, then we can easily solve this question. Even if if you have been given by here, you just if you do the calculation, it won't affect, right? It's just yeah. extra calculation you are doing. And so one more thing, sir. If it is the uh, W hat uh, la uh, lasso or L one lasso, we don't have a uh, that uh, solution, right? This W solution. Right? Yeah. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Yeah. It doesn't have a closed form solution for lasso. Okay, okay. got got it, got got. It. Okay, again, in this case, you have to fit the model of case W0 plus W1x, right? So again, one dimensional data points, and these are corresponding label. In this, you are using the validation, so cross-validation techniques, and validation set is x2, y2. So you are training model on these two models, these two points. So x, this is your x1, this is your x2, this is your x3. So you are validating over x2, y2. So you are training your model on x1 and x3, right? You, you set it for validation, and this is your training set now. So you you are training your model on 0, 0, 0,2 and 3, 1, right? So this, these are your labels and these are your data points. So what will be the best fit line that that uh, that uh, that fit these two points? One second, sir. I'm just doing it. And then we'll find out the weight vector using the same formula. W y is equal to w zero. That is going to be one. So best fit line will always pass through these two points, right or not? It's a y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. So that's the way we can find, right? Yeah, because the all best fit, because there is always a line that passes through two points, right? Yeah, yeah. So the best fit line will be one which passes all these two points. Mm, one minus two is equal to. You can think, M think like uh, you have been given feature there. Minus right two. Minus one by one upon three. Yeah, one upon three, sir. Point zero zero. Uh, the slope is point zero zero. Or zero point three. Yeah, and what is constant? Two. Intercept. If we, if we so just intercept use uh, data point one, zero, two, in that case, if x is zero, then obviously we get the w zero is two because the yeah. label so, for so that y is zero two. Com, zero comma two will be somewhere here, and, and three comma one will be, so this is zero comma two, and three comma one will be somewhere here, right? Three comma one. Sir, are you writing somewhere? OK, now, now I can see. So, so, so we have to fit these two points with so this line here. Okay. Yeah. So you can find the line, and it will be w one will be minus one by three, and w zero two. And so, right. So w zero two. Okay. Okay. Then the intercept now. Okay. Okay. Is so it w one is minus one by three? Minus one by three. Okay, so because it, constant it, constant is how much? Two. Uh, two. Well, oh, intercept is two, I think. Yeah. And so it yeah. is. Oh, it the, the the slope is negative. That's why it is minus one by three. Okay. Minus one by three. Okay. 
just find the equation that passes through this point. Just y minus two over uh, this will uh -huh. one minus minus three x minus zero, right? So y uh -huh. equal to minus one by three x plus two. So this is your w w zero. This is your w zero. This is your that edge of x, right? Got it. Got it. Okay. 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 Sir, can we get this types? Can we get this what? Uh, this document and status document. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, add it, add to the same folder. Okay, sir. Thanks. Okay, so. In the next question, we have been given the three class three class classification problem, uh, where the class levels are 0, 1, 2, and each training examples are coming from three dimensional space. So they have three features, three binary features. It means that features taking values 0 and 1 only. So how many parameters you have to estimate for applying the naive base algorithm? So for the level y, for the distribution of level y, how many parameters you have to estimate? One, two, one, two, one. Two, one. Two, one, parameters. One, two parameters. Two parameters. Right? Yeah. So because three classes classification problem. Yes. Right? Okay, three now, class. Okay, now sorry, three class. Now in the conditional space. So in the conditional space, you have y given y equal to zero, given y equal to one, and given y equal to two, right? For all three, you have to calculate. So you have to calculate for F1, F2, and F3, right? Which question are you looking at, sir? Uh, uh, I'm not remember the question number in the portal, yes, but this is number eight. Question number eight of question sixteen. Okay. So question is mentioned here, right? So you have been given three class classification problem, and the features are binary features, three features. So so all these you have to calculate. So three, question number sixteen in portal. Question number sixteen in portal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah got it. Got it. So all these three 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 six. Nine parameter here, two parameter here. Right, so sir, nine total. So how nine total. parameters, sir? How nine parameters, sir? So these three distributions, conditional distributions, right? Yeah. So, so for y equal, to, so y equal to zero, okay. We have f one, f two, f three, okay. F one will take zero value or one value, right? One value. So, yeah. But, so I need, I just need one estimate. Right, because yeah. because if I calculate probability of f one given by equal to zero. So the probability of F1 given 0 will be just 1 minus this thing, right? OK. OK. So in total, you need 11 estimations. So, so I understood this, the y given by y given F1, y equal to 0. And by, all this, sir, I understood 9 parameters. But the probability that y equal to 0 and 1 and y equal to 3 is also there, no? Y equal to 2. So, okay. so this calculate all... two of them, then the third oh. one is automatically calculated. So okay, 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 okay. Sum is one. Oh, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, sir, for sir, what, uh, uh, go on, also. Sir, uh, just one second. Sir, in this case, when they just mention knife base, we assume that it's uh, uh, your conditional like holds, uh, conditional independence holds. Knife, knife means that conditional. Independent. Uh, independent. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. Correct, Does correct, the nine correct. birds itself mean that? Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Sorry, sorry, stupid question. Go ahead, go ahead, got it clear. Let me go ahead, sorry. Okay. So uh, for y is equal to zero, we have f1 given y is equal to zero, f2 given y is equal to zero, f3 given y is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So how many factors are there in that three? Or three, three parameters. So so for this distribution, this distribution, right? So you need to estimate probability that the first feature taking value one given by equal to zero. This pair of, this value you need to estimate. The other one will always always be uh, this is the other one, right? So this is just one minus of this thing. Correct. So you just need to estimate this thing, right? Similarly for F2 as well. So F2 for the distribution F2 given by equal to zero, you just need to estimate this probability. And other one will be the one minus. So uh, in similarly three three features you have. So three for this, and now the for the conditional space of y equal to one. So again three there and three again there for the conditional space of y equal okay. to two. Three plus three plus three plus two is what you are referring to. Sir, that two d two is the power d. Huh? This formula for how many parameter we need. That that is when when we don't apply the knife condition. 
डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ एक्स गिवन बाईक्वल टू बाईक्वल टू जीरो In this space, how many such x you can find? Twenty-one. Twenty. Answer will be twenty-three. So you have d d features, right? And every features can take two values. So hmm. how many such x you can find? Two power eight. 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 Eight is power two plus two twenty-six. Okay. Two power d minus one. D is given three here in this case, so it will be two eight, right? So you need to estimate seven seven parameter here. Similarly for x given by equal to one, x given by equal to two. Seven here, seven here, and this will be how many? Twenty-one plus two, twenty-three. Twenty-one. Right. So twenty-three parameter we have to estimate in that. If you drop the knife condition. Okay. Sir, please repeat the same. Uh... Yes, sir. This condition. Which condition? Can you please mute? I think yes. So, so in this labels, uh, you have two estimation, right? So now in this conditional space, x given by equal to zero. So uh, we are finding this distribution. So finding distribution means that for every points in this distribution, you will assign a probability to that, to that, right? So how many uh, points are there in this uh, this uh, this distribution? So how many such x you can create? You have three features: f one, f two, f three. Right, and every features can take two values. Right, so it can take two values, two values, two values. So in total, eight data points are there in this uh, this particular distribution. Right, now you have to assign probability to all these eight distributions. Are uh, eight as in two to power three? Two raised to power three. Right. Okay. So so in total, seven. Yeah, we have dropped the naive uh, base uh, uh, assumption, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, we are dropping the naive condition. So they are not. Uh, they are not independent they are not independent thing conditional okay and if each of the feature has three levels then it goes even further complicated yeah so this is 8 for just uh, each of these for y is equal to 0 right yeah y equal to 0 then you have to do for y is equal to 1 and y is equal to Two. Yes. So by twenty three, we are removing one also, na? Eight minus one is seven, na? So seven for this, seven for this, for seven for this, so twenty one and why two seven? for the. I'm so sorry, I don't understand why yeah. one less. Because in this distribution you have eight points, right? Once you have found the probability for the seven points, the eight one gonna be one minus some over all those, right? Okay. So you just need to find the probabilities of seven points. So seven into three uh, is twenty-one, and then for y is equal to zero and y is equal to one, two parameters. Two parameters there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So if it is three levels in uh, features, then it becomes three uh, uh, three power d. Three features in that, yeah. Then then it will become three into three into three, right? Three raised to power d. Right? Okay. Uh, three so, raised to power three minus one, right? Minus one. The parameter will be three raised to power d minus one parameter, and uh, then you have to multiply it with the classes as well, right? How many classes? By equal to zero, by equal to one, by equal to three. In this case, three. Yeah. And if I assume the naive condition. And plus the uh, sorry. No, go on, go on, go on. Plus the uh, whatever number of y they are minus one more parameters, right? Yes. yes. And if I assume the naive condition, then it will be six for each of them, each feature. If you assume feature. the naive condition, then for every features like F one, uh, then in this case, let's say F one is taking value zero, one, two, three, right? Yeah. And then so for F one given by distribution, you have to estimate two parameters. Two parameters. Two plus two. Plus. 
plus two six. Right. So this is called by by equal to zero. Similarly, for F two you have to calculate. F two by equal to zero, and similarly for F three you have to calculate. Right. And for again the conditional space for by equal to one again one of the same story. So two here, two here, two here, it's and twenty. Okay. So six. For y is equal to zero, six for y is equal to one, and six for y is equal to two. So six three is eighteen plus the one above zero one two. You have two of them, so it's twenty. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So in this particular question, you have been given the data matrix X of the same D cross N. So uh so every every column is a data point so this is your first data point this is second data point third data point fourth data point and the corresponding levels are one zero one zero right now uh you have to you have to have uh, you have been given that this, this is the general notation right that we have discussed yesterday so now it's asking what is the value of p three zero so what is what does this mean P three zero means sir, zero is the level and three is the third one. Yes, okay. So this is the estimate for P that the third which is taking value one given by equal to zero, right? So what you will do in this case? Base. No, I am to estimate this value. Sir, we can just check it visually. Like we visually, have yeah. two examples that are classified by the label zero. So, so you will look at what for the second with, example with, and the fourth okay. example, and we will we will check whether uh, for which the third feature is one. We will look for the second example and fourth example, and this is your third feature, right? So one out of two is taking one uh, feature value one, right? Third feature value one. Point five. So point point five will be the answer, right? Now the, in the next part, you have to predict the level for the one zero zero. So for all estimate. Estimate you need. So, what is the estimate for P? If you look at this, what sir, is the estimate for P? Zero point five. Sir, uh, sir, can we dwell for thirty seconds on this question? From where we got y equal to zero? Is, is it given the question? Sorry, I had lost the connection in between. This, this, this particular. What does this mean? Uh, okay, yeah, there it is. Yes, that uh, y equal to zero and the feature number three. Yes. Yeah, the feature number three. Yes. Okay, fine. So, so what is the prediction for P? P? Zero point five. It's just uh, proportions of zero one class points, right? So this is zero point five. What is uh, similarly for what is P? Uh, P one zero. One zero means y should be zero and uh, one is feature, right? Yeah. Yeah, one is feature. So basically, four data points are there, right? Yes. Yeah, so what belongs to class zero? Two and four. Class four point two and two point point four belongs to class zero. And you will look for only this class zero, right? Class zero. Yes. So this probability will be zero because the first picture is zero in both the cases. Both here also, here also, right? Yes. What is P P two zero? Uh, sorry, P one zero. When we say we are looking for. Points two and four, mm -hmm. okay. But where do we get the zero from? Then you will look for the first feature where you should take one, right? Count for where the first feature is taking value one. First feature, it's in the third you're row you're that we have Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, go on. Okay. I mean, like, I, I don't know if you are clarifying or you are asking about Kalpana. No, no, I'm, I'm asking. Like, he's asking for P two zero, like. P2, uh, zero. P two zero, no. okay. No P one zero. How do you compute? Can you just please uh, show that one? So, so what does this mean? What does this mean? Where are you pointing at? I am. This sir, is, does it mean like zero level, and uh, the first feature is one? First feature is one, right? So what what does so this mean? P one zero. P one zero is y is equal to zero and feet. Uh, feature is equal feature, to one. Feature is yes. equal to one. Okay. Uh, F1 feature is equal to one. So feature one Even? is one and y is equal to zero is what we are computing. Yes. So show the question, no? Yeah, no, sir. Yeah. Show the question. So yeah, feature is one. Uh, so here y is equal to zero, you have two places, no? So yeah. 
for that corresponding you have to see the feature so where you get one so you have to see the second uh, column and the fourth column fourth column mm. in that you get they are asking which feature feature feature, feature one. One, one. Feature one, one. one so features are the rows yeah, this, this, these are, this, this is your first feature, this is your second feature, this is your third feature. Are you writing somewhere, sir? It's not, so we cannot, I, it's not really visible, visible, sir. I don't know what you're pointing at. So this is your first feature, this is your second feature, this is your third feature, right? Again, it is second Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. So the rows are the features. Where are the features? Are the feature? All the rows are features. That is where I this, am confused. Where are the features? This is our data points, x1, x2. This is your data point. This is your data first point. data point. This is your yeah. second data point. This is your yeah. third data point. This is your fourth data point. Yeah, and what the other features point. value? This is the first feature value. This is the second feature value. And these are the third feature value. I, I don't know whether it is happening for me or for everyone. Just, your just, re just, rem well. just remember the horizontal is yeah, data before. point, vertical is features. That's it. Sorry? No, uh, so sorry. Horizontal is data point Maybe and vertical is uh, features. Like yeah. Yeah. Here in this case, yeah. vertical yeah. and data points, data points are features. Here it is written the other way. Yeah. Rows yeah. and yeah. 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 Yeah.
zero point five. What about this thing? X is now your one zero zero, right? So it means yeah. that this probability you can write as probability that the first feature is taking value one given by equal to zero times probability that the second feature is taking value zero this zero, right? Given by equal to zero and the third third feature is taking value. It's one zero zero actually. One zero zero. When third which is taking value zero given by equal to zero, right? This probability I can write as the product of this, right? What is yeah. this estimate? Um, it says P one zero. P one zero. That is zero. Right. So this is zero. So all will go zero. Right? Everything will go to zero. Yeah. What about this thing now? P by equal to one. This thing P by equal to one. Given the test data point. So this you can write as P x. Given by equal to one, this is one zero to one. Yeah. Right. Uh, times p by equal to one, right? Yes. Okay, so p by equal to one is yeah. again point five. Uh, on what you can write this as? This you can write probability that the first feature is taking value. Uh, one. 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 Y, y to one. Y equals to one. P second feature is taking value zero. Zero. Y equal to one. One. Times third feature is taking value zero. By equal to. So, so this estimate. What is this estimate? Um, it's P uh, one one. Could you show the estimates we have made? Once we see the data, then only we will able to find it out, no? Can we see those estimates? P one one is for zero point five. Uh, and what is this estimate? That is one. Uh, one, minus, P, one minus p uh one minus p two one p two one yeah. and what is this again one minus p three one p three one one minus p three one right and this again one minus p yeah, yeah. This, this. and that, that is p itself isn't no. it it's y is equal to one sorry yeah this is yeah. p so so this this will become this you have calculated, right? So P11 here 0.51 minus this is again one and this is 0.5. So this will become 0.5 based on the Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here we are using a naive Bayes theorem to find these uh, probabilities of P y is equal to zero given X test and P y is equal to one given X test. And MLE we will use to, to decide which one of the two to uh, go for because we are looking at the maximum likelihood. Is that right? MLE we use to estimate these parameters. The oh, formula that we are using is to is, uh, estimate these parameters. Okay. Yeah. So the formula that we use to estimate are actually coming from the MLE. Okay. And the ultimate that P Y given X test is being used uh, calculated using naive Bayes theorem. This is the Bayes theorem we are applying. Theorem. This probability we are applying the Bayes theorem. Okay. Actually, so the data the, point itself uh, is gone, Divya. No, please you go ahead. No, no, my. And it's, uh, I'll tell in the end. It's okay. It's very simple. It's not a question actually. So, uh, so it's just that now the answer is uh, why we uh, take the label one for this X test, right? Because it has a yeah, higher probability of five Q. Yeah. So tell me, tell me, do we need smoothing in this case or not? I don't think so. I don't. Yeah, because. Probability are different. It is not equal. Actually, we need smoothing, and uh, question says that don't assume smoothing. But in, in practice, all smoothing is always done. So remember, these probabilities are going to zero, and because of these probabilities going to zero, this this uh, this uh, this is going to zero, right? That that should not happen. And by this okay. going to zero, it is because the first feature is not taking value one in our training example. Remember, remember for these two data points, two data points. So the first feature is not taking value one. So actually, a smoothing is required this part in this particular kind of example. But it's mentioned in the question itself that don't uh, do smoothing. So you need not be about worry about the smoothing part here. But if smoothing is asked, then the probability will change, right? These probabilities will change. 
So smoothing yesterday, you were showing that it is not just one data point, four of them that are to be added. Four, yeah, the four of them has to be added. So that is what we have to do in the prob in the exam if we are given. If if we if it is saved as do the smoothing, then you have to add those data points. But in this case, it's not saying that to it's, it's clearly mentioned that assume no smoothing is done on that. Okay, so you need not to worry. You need not to do any smoothing in the data set. Uh, just for clarification, uh, smoothing will require addition of four data points. Yeah, four data points. One, 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 zero, 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 one, 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 zero, zero for each of the two labels. Mm, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, where, sorry, uh, where will we add them? You just add four data points in the uh, example, standing examples. You have three four, four data points. Four, four, four of them, sir. I think uh, one is for class one and one is for class zero. We add. Uh, Two data additional data point. Na? One is taking all values one, one is all taking values zero, right? So two for class zero, two for class one. Okay. And just, to, just a quick clarification, sir. I think smoothing is done when the you know test point is not there in my you know uh, training data set. But here one zero zero is my test point, so that is coming there na, in the training. But for class point. for class zero is not present, right? For class one only is present, right? For class zero is not present, so it should be present for both the classes. That's why ah, it should be correct. Yes, now it is clarified. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you just write what it will be looking like if it is smoothened? I understand we spoke about it, but if you write it, I think it will be clear. Then, then your data will be like so. You have one zero zero first data point. Another is whatever the data yeah. point should be given, right? So zero one one, zero one one, and zero zero, zero one. one. Zero zero one zero 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 one zero 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 and this belongs to class here I'm denoting the labels. So this belongs to class zero, this belongs to class one, class zero, class one, right? And so you add four data points as well. So zero 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 four plus zero. Um, zero 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 four plus one. One 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 four plus one plus one 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 four plus zero. Okay. okay. Now what will the Y look like? Why is the one that is there at the bottom that you had written? This is your one. Yes, that is okay. Y. Now okay. now your estimate will change, right? Your estimate will change now. Right. Okay. So I have a question with regards to this. We already have one data point where all three are zero, and the class label is one. But but and we are adding for smoothing. We are adding one more. So, this is very small data set. This is very small data set. So, so this estimate will change a lot, right? Because adding of these data points, this estimate will change a lot, right? But in general, your data set will be very large. In this case, this adding four point won't alter your uh, probabilities. By much, so we generally go for adding all these data, data points. Yeah, sir, I got that. But my question here is, we already have one set. Like if you look at the uh, yeah, last I know that this is, Yeah, so I know that this so is we already. Duplicate the, yeah, we have a duplicate the data point as well. You can avoid okay, this okay. in this particular, but generally uh, we do the practice like adding these four points. Irrespective whether those are there or not. They are on. Okay, sir, got it. So I think okay. So in this particular question, you have been given this in information. So you have been given a Gaussian naive model, which is given a training data set, and for unseen data points, this information is given to you. This two probabilities is given to you. Can we predict the label for X? No. Because you need for prediction the label for x, you need the probability that p by equal to zero given x and p by equal to one given x. This probability you need, right? And yeah. for this this probability, you actually need uh, p by equal to zero as well and p by equal to one as well. Right? That information is not given to us. Right? So this is actually proportional to p x given by equal to zero times p by equal to zero, right? Yeah. We we are all only all only given this value, and we are not given this value, right? So 
uh, this will be affected by this value as well. So you, you don't have this information. So insufficient information is given to make any prediction in this case. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. So one more last question. You have uh, you know the distribution of p x y. So you know the joint distribution. Can you find the conditional distribution p x y always? So can I write p by given x as uh, p, x, p by x upon p of x. Can I write this like this? Yes. Yes, sir. And can I write px in the form of uh, joint distribution? Px in the form of joint distribution. Yeah. Okay, can you find marginal using uh, the joint distribution? Yes. How? That will be uh, uh, the conditional. And and law, the law, law of total probability, yes. So, will sum over what? You will sum over all the uh, y's in the range of y, right? Or in, yes. in, the, case, in the case of con, uh, continuous, it's just f of uh, y of x and integral of f of y of x and in the support of y, right? So, so uh, once you have the joint distribution, you can find the conditional distribution as well. So, you can always have access to this as well. So, this answer of this question is yes. Is this fine or not? Yes, sir. The solution is fine. I'm so more worried. Can... I can do it on my own. Yeah, so right now we are confused. Sir. Too much confused. Sorry. So sir, right now, sir, having the, these most of question now, linear regression and all the probability. So yeah, mm -hmm. right now we are in a state of shock. <laughs> so so did you solve this mock or not? Before coming to the session. So many questions. I didn't even know how to approach it. Okay, so, so I think we are done with the BK. Big five and big six, and some questions are remaining from big seven. So, party will uh, do those, yeah. Then yeah. we can discuss this. Later. Yeah, uh, there's That's no a YouTube link for this. Uh, uh, where can I find it? YouTube link, someone already link shared this question? Because someone already shared in chat. I think I must have not been, uh, I must yeah. have dropped. okay. Someone said thank you, uh, sir. If we stick to the mock. So what is the probability that we get 50? <laughs> Every time you ask this question, Rohit. So let's finish week seven first, OK? So so that we can yeah, let, statistics later. Let Karthik sir get in and compute the remaining. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Then Rohit, the probability will go up. Yeah. Later, we find the conditional probability, given <laughs> the mock we solved. So Karthik, are you there? Yeah. I Okay, so this goes to the So is it possible the screen? Yeah. Okay, so the first question that we have is as follows. You have you have some decision stump that is given to you, right? So just one node followed by the root followed by two children. Okay? So it's, and uh, we have 500 data points at the parent node. So let's uh, do that part. So there, is, there are 500. Some are positive, some are negative. Out of which 200 points go into the left side. Right? Uh, some noise coming from somewhere. Basu, 
Okay, so uh, there are 200 going to the left child, right? So, so uh, before going there, let's try to see how many are positive in the parent. So the number of data points that belong to class one in the parent is 300, right? So 300 are positive, and uh, how many will be negative? 200. 200 will be negative, right? So. So that is parent is done. Now, if you come to the left child, now the number of data points that belong to class one in the left child is 50, right? So 50. And what will be the number of one negative data 250. points? 250. Uh, 250. 150 or 150, right? Because 150, you have yeah. 200 that go into the left child. So out of 200, 50 are positive. So for the right child, you can just compute the remaining. So you can. That's so 150, 150, isn't it? 250, 50. 250, 50. 50, 50, 50. 250, 50. 250, 50. Okay, 250, uh -huh. 50, right? So that is the, the 250 plus 50, 300, 150 plus 50, 200, right? So that, that's it. Now that's the, that's the part, that's the first part, right? So what is the label going to be for the left side? So left side is class one, oh, just for confirmation. Left side is yeah. class one, right? Uh, left side left child is class one. Uh, that's what we have to find. So what is the yeah, label okay. of the left child? So zero. Zero. Yeah. So it will be zero, right? So zero because there are more data points that belong to class zero than class yes. one. Right? So yes, yes, correct. Zero. So that's all. Now what is the next question? What is the entropy of the left parent? Uh, sorry, of the parent. Right? So we have to compute. E, e right so entropy of the parent now what is the proportion of points that belong to class one three by five yeah. so three by three hundred by five right three by five so entropy will be minus three by five log three by five log right. base two three by five minus three by five uh, log two three by five, three by five uh, minus uh, Two, two by five. five. Two by five. Log. Base two, two by five. five. Two by five. Right. So I have completed this already. In case someone has, you can tell me if not. This turns out to be zero point nine seven uh, one. Right. Okay. So see, the important point in this entropy is, please calculate up to three decimal places. That is like only then you will end up with the correct answer. Okay. Right. So. Make sure that you retain three decimal places everywhere. We have to round off also, sir, with, uh, at the three decimal place in exam. Sorry, from? We have to round off also at three decimal place in exam. Uh, yeah, yeah, you better. So, okay. for example, this, this actually is 97095. So, I have made it 971. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, yes, sir. That, yeah. Sir, sorry, sir. Sir, in the calculator, sir, uh, I think it is uh, basically given the log base 10 and natural log. Okay. Uh, no, no, Rohit. Uh, the scientific calculator that is there in the portal examination portal has uh -huh. log base two. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. So in case see, I I try to do this, I tried to share this last time, and then I got the feedback that uh, the calculator used this uh, not this this calculator is not used. So I just share this again and let me know. If a different tab. Well, if it's not there, there is log y to base x, right? You can use this. Yeah, so there is this also uh, can be used. There is log 2 anyway. Yeah, so log right. h to the base 2 is there. So if you want, say, log 4, that is the easiest. But if it is not there, then yeah, this you can do. Right? How do you do this? So log 4 to the base 2. Yeah, so I think you do it that way. Okay, anyway, so that is the entropy of the parent. Now, what is the entropy of the left child? Is the free value for the left child? Uh, one, by one by four. Yeah, one by four. One by four, P. One by four. Okay, so that's one by four. We just replace the whole thing with one by four. And this will be what? Three by, three, by four. Four. three by four. Three by four. Three by four. Right? So if you compute this, it turns out to be 0 0.811. Right? 0 0.811. Then you do the same thing for the uh, 
right child so that is what the 1 by 6 no sorry 5 by 6 yeah 5 by 6 5 by 6 okay let's try by 6 so 5 by 6 by 6 and then this comes six, right so this comes out to be 0.650 right so this is 0.650 and what is the information gain so what you what do you need first for information gain you need gamma right so what is gamma here uh so it is uh 200 by 500 yeah 200 by 500 right so it is 2 by 5 and in ig is this one right so Sir, can you plug in this gamma gamma value how you got this thing 2.5 so out of 500 points 200 points go in the left child so 200 by 500 okay 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 we shouldn't take 300 by 500 no sir i mean total number of plus in the parent node no no it has it's not it has gamma has nothing to do with the positive negative right only only the proportion of the left point. child we have to consider no, yeah so you can consider the ds by d right how many points are going in so shouldn't that be 300 by 500 sir 200 data points go into the left child right out of 500 so 2 by 5 okay so how many go into the left child but the formula is uh, uh, yes by total right yeah the formula is cardinality right Yeah, cardinality of the total one. So DS means what? DS is not just uh, see D is data set, right? D stands for data set. So the data set will have positive and negative also, right? So here, for example, D will here uh, D will have what is the size of D? To be five hundred, right? So there are like five hundred points, and what we call as DS is the data set that goes into this node. left child so that is going to be 200 uh, sir so a quick clarification so here left side is yes right that is a standard practice left is yes yeah left is yes right is no okay i hope that is clear now what is the information gain entropy of parent i minus 0.971 Yeah, zero point nine seven one, and uh, entropy of the left child is point eight one one plus point six five zero. Yeah, minus zero point eight one one into lambda into gamma. Gamma, yeah. Gamma and uh, minus, because you could have a whole bracket. So this is the weighted entropy of the children. Okay, so plus zero point six five zero point six five zero into three by five three by five. Right, so yeah, sorry, this is three by five. Now, if you compute this, the information gain is zero point two five six. Right, so report all three decimal places, and then you are done. Right, so that is that's all there is to discuss. Okay, sir. Okay, so now we have the next question is on on uh, decision tree again. So three dimensional features. They are all possible. Sorry to interrupt, sir. In the yeah. previous question, what did it mean? Uh, For that three hundred data points is going uh, for class one. Three hundred. The number of data points that belongs to class one in the parent node is three hundred. Yeah, out of five hundred, five hundred data points, three hundred belong to class one, right? They are positive class, two hundred are negative class. They are labeled class label is one. Means it is yes. See, no that. Yes and this yes no is different, right? So, for, so yes and no refers to yes and no refers to the outcome of the decision, right? So this is yes and this is no, right? So the two branches are referred to as yes and no. The here post better to use the term positive and negative. So there are three hundred positives, two hundred negatives. Okay, the that yes and no is different from the outcome of the question that you asked so we shouldn't confuse the two sir got it sir thank you sir yeah. okay so so now you have this following decision tree and the features are okay so x1 is x1 x2 x3 are the three features so 
the question is asking you consider all the points that are predicted as zero by this tree right now what is the volume of this region so zero by so consider all these all the points in the three dimensional space mm -hmm. that are predicted as zero the predicted label for those points are zero right so consider all these points in 3d space what will be the volume of this region so one one by four just four into three into two yes four into yeah. three into two right right so it's four into three into two if you are uh if you are not able to visualize this it will it looks something like this right so you you need for you to get zero as the predicted label what should happen x1 should be less than four x2 should also be x2 should be less than three right it's an unconditioned so after x1 is less than four x2 should also be less than three and in addition to these two x3 should also be less than two right so x1 less than four is this region to the back of this space x2 less than 3 is this region and x3 less than 2 is the region below the top of the cube cuboid right so every single point in this red region will will go to class 0 and uh, that's why we are calling it a volume okay so okay okay so 4 into 3 into 2 it's 24 right so the answer is 24 okay, okay any questions here no sir okay right so that is question 13 now the next question is you have a binary classification problem 100 points are there it's a balanced data set so when i say balanced it means 50 belong to class 1 and 50 belong to class 0 and uh, you are using knn with k equal to 1 okay and so you are you are testing the knn on the training data set itself so you want to find the training misclassification rate right how many points are misclassified by one nn algorithm on on the training data set so is the statement s1 true or false false uh, true that's true okay. it's true sir. it's actually true right so the every point is its own neighbor so if you query the if you find the distances you'll of course you'll have to find 100 distances but for each data point, it, it itself will be the closest one, right? So that that will be the first neighbor to consider. So the error will be zero. So this is uh, very similar to the first question that we saw today, right? H of x i equal to uh, y a in the case of y. the grid. So similar to that, here it's this is also h of x i equal to y a. Uh, yeah, same same question in fact. Uh, uh, sir, this is the this is the case of uh, overfitting, now. Yeah, this is uh, extreme okay. overfitting. Yeah. Okay. 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 We are memorizing the data set here, so okay. So that is so S one is false. Uh, sorry, S one is true. S one is true. What about S two? That is false, right? False. So that is false. S two is false. Okay, that is false. Right. So it's no matter how well you do on your training data set, okay, you should finally do well on unseen. Uh, Examples, right? So, S2 is false. So, this is uh, the last. Sir, uh, sir, just uh, just I will take less than one minute on this question. I think yesterday also someone asked this question, right? Uh, uh, sir, in KNN, we don't come out with any model, right? The entire uh, entire set is itself a model, right? And yeah. what we discussed, what we have learned so far, that uh, whatever data, new data point we get, like X test, correct? So, we find out the distance of that point with all the uh, training data set right like say for example 100 data points are there so i will find out the 100 distance and say yeah. for example my k is 5 then i will uh, arrange it in ascending order and then i will pick the first five and i will find which one is maximum whether it is one maximum or zero maximum this is the broader understanding of knn right so here yeah. how come we are getting training error when there is no model itself then how come we are talking about training model training error the See, when you say there is no model, it's, we, we don't have a model in terms of any parameters, right? So it's like we don't have a parametric model to represent. So this hope, hope the question is clear, right? When we are saying that, you know, there is no question of model, we are getting a data, we are finding the distance, 
with respect to all the training point and then we are taking a call so from here the question of training error is coming into picture here in training error is there right so h is the classifier we have the knn classifier and the error is defined for it right so for every data point h of xi will be the value output by your knn and you can compute the error right so so are we saying that every data point is a you know indicator of itself that's what we are trying to say here for one n for one nearest neighbor it, that is what we are saying so nearest neighbor means the data point itself because that distance will be zero correct yeah so we are saying that for such a case the training error will be zero okay fair enough okay so yeah so this is the final question that we have so you have a we have four points that's your data set right and you have, you have to find all linear classifiers that give you perfect classification so zero misclassifications mean uh, no errors right and we have five weight vectors given to us okay so if you here it's easy to plot these points okay so i have plotted them in the exam also such a question comes it's easier to plot so one zero is positive and Zero one is also positive, and minus one zero and zero minus one are negative, right? So, what which of these weight vectors do you think will give you perfect classification? So, weight vectors in first quadrant. Okay, weight vectors in the first quadrant. Okay, so will this one work? One two work? Uh, yes. Okay, one two will work. So W one will work. It will give you zero misclassification error. Which W two? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, right. So W two will also work. Now, what about W three? And um, no, sir. It will uh, it will give a uh, misclassification. Okay, so W three, W four, W five. Right? If you consider all of them, they'll give you misclassification, as you said. The best way to understand is uh, mis like by saying that they all lie in the first quadrant, right? All the proper weight vectors have to lie somewhere in the first quadrant, and corresponding decision boundary will be perpendicular to it, right? So it will look something like this, right? Any any value of W where both the W1 and W2 are positive, uh, that should work for us. Okay, anything else will be next, will, will not work. Can we plot minus one minus four also just for sake of understanding? Yeah, so minus one minus four will look like something like this, and yeah, so, so it's not perpendicular, but assume that this is perpendicular, then so but here also I'm able to classify this point. No, yeah, this point was raised last time also. This is not you can't arbitrarily flip the sign of your predicted labels, right? Here I'm predicting. These two to be green and these two to be red, which is wrong, right? So it doesn't matter if you are able to just draw a line. The final predicted labels matter, right? So the final predicted label should match the original label, right? So that is the real test. So what are the predicted three labels? Work, right? That's the reason W3 doesn't work. That's yeah, that's the reason uh, W3 is. Okay, yeah. labels are interchangeable. Okay. Okay, so a lot of them actually not a lot of them quite a few of the students uh, made a mistake on this where they selected w3 also as the right answer but yeah even i guessed it w3 is because of the decision boundary but they didn't care sir, even, sorry if i take 1019 sir the w2 yeah then will it be uh, classifying all the points into two parts yeah, yeah the decision boundary will be the same right that's why gp uh, okay oh yeah yeah got it yes w is perpendicular to decision boundary right yeah so the other way of solving this is to compute w transpose x so you can you can write down w1 uh, x1 plus w2 x2 and see if it is greater than or equal to zero less than or equal to zero right all that you can see so for example for these two points right one for one zero 
W transpose X will be what? For the data point one zero, W transpose X will just be W one X one. And for the second data point, this data point, it will be just W two X two. Right. So when when will the predictions and actual labels match? When both W one and W two are positive. Right. So only then will the predicted label. Uh, Match the true label. So you can solve this algebraically this way or geometrically this way. Actually, geometrically you have given the color. Otherwise, in the exam we might go wrong easily choosing W three also. Ah right. So in the exam what you can do is color if we are able to identify. Otherwise, we can choose. Yeah. Name. Instead of color, you can use the symbols plus and minus to represent the points. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's all we have for so now. So the answer is just uh, linear combinations of W one and W two. So the answer is in this case the answer is these two. No, no, no. So when I say W one, I'm I'm talking about the W is given by W one and W two, right? So I'm talking about a general weight vector W whose components are W one and W two, okay. right? Now for that first. Two date for the two green data points. If W one, if this classifier has to class three, this should happen, right? Yes. And for the other two data points, they are minus one zero and zero minus one, right? So W transpose X in this case will be minus W one X one, uh, or rather, there's no X one, right? Because X one is one. One is one here. X two is one here. So let me just write it down. Here x1 is minus one, so minus w1 minus one should be less than zero for it to be predicted as negative one. Likewise, for this data point, minus w2 into x2, x2 is what again minus one should be less than zero. So if you compare these four inequalities, you will again end up with the same thing: w1, w2, both should be positive. So that is one other way you can. Say that these two vectors are the correct ones. Uh, it should be only greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero. Great, sir. Uh, that's a bit of a trouble, right? If you have w one equal to zero, like any one equal to zero, what will happen? You will have uh, let's say w one is equal to zero, then w two equal to whatever. So you will have a decision boundary like this, right? If you have no, actually, I was asking you. W transpose x should be greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero. Oh, okay. For yeah, for positive, it it can be greater than or equal to zero. Yeah. Okay. Sir, but uh, the way we defined in our regression, the sorry classification for our lecture, we have taken it greater than zero. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So this one of these two, I I am I hope we have given it correctly in the exams, right? So that we have made no, it's, sure. It's, No, in the in the lecture, I'm hundred percent sure. The prof said, like as a default, greater than zero has been taken. I'll I'll just check if you want. Yeah, okay. You're See, right. Basu, you're right. He started with greater than equal to zero, and then he said greater than zero. Yeah. yeah. Classifier seems clearly said it's greater than. Uh, Karthik sir. Uh, yeah. The, I have. I have. Sorry. Uh, JP. Uh, JP. One question. Uh, Uh, Karthik sir, I missed. Like, why is W three not correct? Because it still classifies. Uh, sorry, I I just totally missed it because I was looking at some other point. I'm sorry. So W three is will give you the wrong predictions, right? It will give you green green for this and red red for this. The the see because the product W T X will be positive, right? For uh, the red points. Yeah, for the red points, right? Because it's minus one zero or whatever. Yeah. Uh, So we'll get uh, so for minus one zero we'll get positive and for zero minus one we'll get positive, but I mean geometrically it's still classifying. It's just that the uh, the uh, what do you say the uh, the value you're getting is uh, W transpose X value you're getting as positive. Hence by that the equation we classify it as positive, but geometrically it's still doing the job, right? Yeah, geometrically it's still classifying. So in practice, what they do is if you they'll flip the labels. 
So yeah, because you will write it as like correct classification is basically W transpose X into Y should be greater than or equal to zero or whatever. Right. That also will be wrong for this W3, right? Because either way it will be wrong. The, but as you said, the geometry will work out. So there is no doubting that. But if you look at, is it classifying it correctly or not? If you just take it at face value, no, it is not classifying it correctly, right? So got it okay so yeah any other questions if not i think yes sir, I, I, was, I was just asking mm -hmm. just a conceptual question uh, since whatever w i take right yeah so what, similar what, to this can you whatever w, sorry yeah. gp go ahead. Yeah. whatever w i uh, i take uh, it will pass through origin right so can i say that uh, my decision boundary will always pass through origin because this kind of question i had seen in one of the activity question so my decision boundary will always pass through origin. Does it mean? For our course, it will always pass through the origin. Okay, but in general, if you there is a, actually a bias term which you have to add, uh, similar to what Nitin was talking about linear regression, right? Y equal to W transpose X plus W naught. So if you bring formulation. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Hello. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I think I had lost the connection. So you were saying that uh, in our course, it will always pass through origin. Yeah, but in general, if you look at it, you can. So again, so this is the same dummy thing, right? The dummy variable. So what you can do is you can add one dummy feature and dummy weight vector to account for this interceptor. So you do but that, sir, then it won't pass through the origin. I think but, sir, in our, our course also, in v itself, uh, in uh, naive wave uh, theorem, professor has, uh, you know, has done a lengthy calculation, and then we ended at w transpose x plus v, and there he, he has drawn a decision boundary, which is, you know, shifted from origin. And then he made that, you know, it should not, uh, it is not necessary that every time it has to pass through origin. So that uh, that creates the confusion. Say, for example, if we get a conceptual question in tomorrow's quiz, then what to write? Whether it will always pass through origin or it will not pass through origin? I think for most of our questions, uh, so within, everything for us passes through origin, right? We can, can we confirm that here? Sir, I think what Banga Prasad is saying is uh, Sorry, can you uh, in. Oh, so for us, all decision boundaries and they all pass through the origin, right? We are confirming that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not. If not mentioned, then assume that it's passing through the origin. Uh, but uh, Nitin sir, in uh, we get in knife based algorithm when professor is drawing, you know, that decision boundary. And he has done that lengthy calculation. So we are ending at W transpose X plus V, where V is a very big expression involving log and everything. Yeah, so, so there, there, that intercept is coming into picture, and that's why their decision boundary is not passing through origin, right? right. But so, so, so that, that's, that, that's the doubt. So, for example, in tomorrow's quiz, if a conceptual question comes that you know all the decision boundaries pass through origin, mm. true or false, or you know, any kind of that. So, what should be our answer? No, in general, decision boundaries will not pass through the origin. So that kind of was that I mean it, it comes like that's kind of ambiguous question because nothing is mentioned. So you can say that no to that question because in general that is not true, right? It, it depends upon what intercept if you are into adding intercept. Okay, so that, that would be false, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think this is if I'm not wrong, Karthik Shah, you can confirm. See this sh showing of this. A decision boundary this way just to explain the concept right because uh there whether it's that or you know even the uh week eight when they showed the gaussian base it it could be a curve it could be a straight line it passes it depends on the original data also where it's distributed you could always shift it to the center you can subtract that uh, b from all the data and shift it to the center i think this is only a visual way to just explain that's why you take it to the origin is that a fair point uh, yeah, for convenience, yeah, for mathematical convenience, we have uh, not introduced the bias term. So, if you introduce the bias term, that will be one dangling thing which keeps tagging along, and then you have to, to like separately Correct. compute the B value for bias, and then this is more easier. So, in towards the end of the course, I think uh, Arun sir will mention that all the whatever we have done is valid. 
for the intercept case also all that we need to do is we need to add one extra one instead of sorry a w not here not one and for the feature so as one. you can mention that one extra one right so, so it will become d plus one eh? yeah it will become all our things will become d plus one. say one one point i missed here i was earlier there was a minus here it should not be minus so this is w transpose x for the red point so it is w1 into minus one less than zero right so in case someone understood it wrongly please make a note sir i have a doubt a similar doubt uh, graded assignment seven question number nine sir actually you uh... okay graded assignment seven uh, seven question number nine uh it's been mentioned in the solution document can you just check that sir actually yeah what is that uh, question uh, what is that doubt uh, regarding that question uh no i don't understand the point see actually uh, in the solution uh, i went through the solution document of this graded assignment 7 uh, it's mentioned that if it's pointing in the fourth quadrant then All but four points will be misclassified. So, can you just explain that line, sir? I couldn't understand what that means. Okay, so See, actually, W vector uh, W is perpendicular to the decision boundary. Am I right, sir? W is yeah, correct. It's and uh, they have already told that this uh, classifier misclassifies four points. So. i could understand from the top i mean when it is in the second quadrant it misclassifies four points but can you when the direction is reversed that is in the fourth quadrant so how uh, i mean okay so this is the data set now what is the yeah. question the red points okay this is i have changed the convention here red points belong to class 1 that's it yeah but still uh, green points belong to class minus 1 Okay, so linear classifier has been trained on this data. The decision boundary is the solid line, right? Yes, sir. Decision boundary solid line. Now, classifier misclassifies four points. Four so points. Just the following could be. Yeah. So if the if the classifier is in the second quadrant, that is pointing in this. Sec Yes, sir. Second and fourth also we need to consider, no, sir, or shouldn't we? We need to consider only second quadrant. We need to consider both second and fourth quadrants, right, sir, for weight vector. So we so if we can let's first take second quadrant. If the weight vector is in the second quadrant, then how many points are misclassified? I think it's four, four, sir, actually. So five, five will be misclassified. Five. Okay, the one green point will also be considered. Okay, see, I messed up the colors here. I, uh, I that's what sir. I couldn't actually understand. Uh, so just wanted to understand how to solve this. Sir. Okay, so let's see. The red is positive in this case. The red is positive. Okay, and green okay. is negative. So if the data, if the weight vector is pointing in this direction, this will be misclassified. So I have one. Two, three. Three, right three misclassifications so if it is in the fourth quadrant then green is i I'll, i'll be misclassifying a whole whole lot of them is it i'll be misclassifying a whole lot of them. so the fourth get it sir when if it is in fourth quadrant how to take it sir see green is minus 1 right So yes, I'll sir. be misclassifying one, two, three, four, five. All the greens will actually be misclassified, no? Because they're all there'll be several misclassifications. Okay. Yeah, I I understand this. The uh, usual convention is not followed here, and no, even if we take weight vector, we need to always consider the decision boundary to consider how many are misclassified. Is it not? Sir? Not just the decision boundary, right? That's the same idea in this mock question also. You have to look at the. See, you yeah, that's look the reason at the. I asked now because it is also similar to the question which we discussed now. So yeah, so the decision is arrived at not by just looking at the decision boundary. In fact, the decision boundary is. the consequence of having a particular w right so you when you take a decision you have to look at w transpose x 
and see the sign of it does it agree with the actual label or not if it agrees it's not a misclassification if it doesn't agree misclassification so that's the way to go about it okay sir okay i is it convincing or still there is so what exactly is it uh, that is worrying you here no that's what the second part i couldn't understand i mean uh... when it comes to the fourth quadrant when we consider the weight vector in the fourth quadrant it i mean when i refer to the solution document of this grade data assignment it mentioned that uh, if it is pointing in the fourth quadrant then all but four points will be misclassified so except those four points all other things will be misclassified that right. point so, i couldn't understand that's why i asked okay if it is in a, what is it saying is all but four points right so only four yeah. points will be classified correctly is what it said what are those yeah, four which points? four points will be corrected so that i couldn't get ah, when yeah, it okay. is in fourth quadrant so this one and this one will be correctly classified okay because they are because red, right? it's neg- yeah they are, in this case it's positive red is positive Pl- so these plus two, one yeah so these two will, it will get these two right so that is 2 plus uh, 3 also it will get right what is the fourth one am i missing something actually about this green point there is one more green oh, point yeah, so you should scroll one. up Correct. Yeah. yeah, I haven't while copying in that got missed out. So those four points. There right? is one more. Okay. Yeah. So those four points alone will be classified correctly. Everything else will be misclassified if the weight vector is in the fourth quadrant. So that's what it means. Okay, sir. Okay. All right. Okay. That's all we have. Uh, can we stop? Yes, sir. Some tips and tricks for case studies. uh yeah i don't know i think you have studied well you have spent a lot of time preparing so we don't have any tips uh, as such okay sir let me rephrase that question sir you know in <laughs> in, in in every term sir you know the quiz is tilted towards one particular topic say for example in quiz 1 it was tilted towards clustering so <laughs> Can you uh, tell us that what will be the point of inclination, like uh, toxic of inclination? <laughs> At least that. Uh, no, it will be. It's like a, it's uniformly distributed across the four weeks. So uh, no, no, sir. This, this is the unique pattern. Distribute. This is the unique pattern which I which I have seen, sir, across the papers. Like there will be five or six question, or at least four to five question related to one particular topic. <laughs> so if simu- someone messed up with one question, so. He is going to lose heavily. So, any kind of inclination, whether base theorem or regression. <laughs> no, nothing. It's uniform, right? Actually, it's really uniform. Right? Okay, that's great then. Uh, I have just one question. Uh, least... Last time we had uh, that Manhattan distance. Do I need to remember that? Yeah, yeah. You need to know because Manhattan is <laughs> important. Uh, Manhattan distance is just the uh, the difference absolute, between absolute um, point is absolute, absolute difference. value, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolute value. So, uh, mm-hmm. like x one, x two minus x one plus y two minus y one. Ah, mod, In mod, abs- of. mod of that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sir, what is the difference um, between the L1. the L two norm and the L one norm? Like, right. what are the values? I know L two is the squared and L one is the modulus. But then, what do those values actually represent? See what, uh, which one, what was the L two norm and the L one norm? They represent the distance. I mean, like if you are asking, what does norm x represent? Is it? Yes, sir. Norm x is uh, geometrically it's the distance of x from the origin. Depending on what norm you choose, the distance will be measured differently. All right, sir. So Sir? mod is essentially required for being L one norm, is it? Ah, uh, yeah. So so uh, regardless of what it is, we are only going to measure the positive distance. I mean, like even if I do x two point two minus point one or point one minus point two, I am only looking at the absolute distance. Correct. Yeah. Component wise, right? Component wise. Compar- yeah, component wise, of course. Yeah. It's the it is the name, Ravi. L two means square, and L one is uh, yeah, not square. Not square. Okay, sir. Arthik sir, I have a question. Sir, what is the probability given that I do the mock 
getting the fifty percent in the quiz two. Starting question. Huh? <laughs> okay. The answer is fifty percent. I Nitin Nitin this is too much because he's more number of weeks have come from that so Nitin will be able to better address this. I I am escaping from this question. <laughs> Okay. So this conditional probability so there are first, first time I, I I think I should stop skimming now and uh, yeah, please yeah. do upload the mock solution. And yesterday's content yes. also, sir. And yesterday's content also. Sir, sir, can you solve the week uh, eight grade assignment question number four? I am able to